Hi guys, it's Sarah Taylor. How are you? I just want to talk to you a little bit about mixing paint. And um, I've had some questions recently just on videos and whatnot about ratios and things like that. So um, we're not going to do a whole lot here I, um, as far as really mixing a bunch of paint, but I want to talk to you a little bit about method and kind of um, process and how I um, go about coming up with the colors and the uh, ratios that I come up with. So uh, this is something I keep around all the time and it's just a bottle and I fill it from here up to here with Floetrol and then I fill it the rest of the way with either GAC 800, which is Golden's pouring medium, or lately, I uh, this was on sale at Michael's, it's Artist Loft pouring medium, which is pretty similar. Um, and what this does is it it's a, a binder where Floetrol is not a binder. So this has binding properties into it, and it, much like acrylic paint has binding property. And what this does when you mix it with the Floetrol is it helps it helps the paint to adhere to the canvas. And it also helps from the paint to crack or, or graze um, things that none of us like as our paints dry. So just using this to mix paint kind of helps ensure a smooth finish and that the paint's gonna do what we want it to do with that extra binder in there. And it also gives it a little bit more gloss generally. <laughs> Pouring medium's a bit more glossy than Floetrol. Um, and then of course, this is the Floetrol that everybody uses. I've been buying smaller ones because the gallons have been stinky. So the great thing that I love about Floetrol is that it's cheap, um, it's a cell producer, and it's a nice consistency for mixing paint. It doesn't thin it down too much, but it gives it more of a fluid property. So as we all know, this is a great product. I also just bought this Artist Loft Iridescent Medium, which is really cool. Um, if you are if you have a paint that is not uh, iridescent or metallic, you can add a little bit of this and it'll give it a little bit of an iridescence, which is really nice. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm actually gonna show you the canvas I'm working on. <clears throat> this guy. So, um, <laughs> I'm gonna actually pour over all this and come down onto the canvas with some more of this teal color and some, of the, some more gold and some more burnt sienna. Just to give you an idea of what I'm working on today. So this is just a tiny bit of that turquoise that I had left over. And we're gonna talk a little bit about paint. So, to get that turquoise color, I started with um, Arteza Cerulean Blue. These Arteza paints are really nice. Um, the premium line, they have a lot of pigment. I also like Grumbacher for similar reasons. Um, I would say that the Arteza is actually it's not quite as thick as our as the Grumbacher, but it's higher pigment, and they're both pretty affordable paint paints. They um, so in in here, I'm just gonna kind of squirt the rest of my cerulean blue in here, and I think what makes a painting great is the color. Um, sometimes I will work on my colors for like a week before I get them how I want them. And a lot of it is just lining up my, I just keep my cups <laughs> with a rubber band and some, and you can store paint this way. The trick is when you're stirring it, don't scrape the sides, just stir the bottom. And you're not really gonna end up with chunks or anything, but I, you know, I don't like start fresh every time. Like this is a concoction that's been going through a couple different paintings. It's got some, Dick Blick bronze, um, a little bit of golden heavy body iridescent bronze, and just some nice um, <clears throat> burnt sienna. 
my Grumbacher, um, which I use the rest of, but it's like this brand, but it's the Burnt Sienna. And this is, oh, this is it. This is the Burnt Sienna, I'm sorry. So it looks more red on the tube. It's actually kind of this nice, um, you know, artist quality Burnt Sienna color. And I like to add Burnt Sienna to my copper to bring it down. I don't like really heavy duty metallic. So back to this nice cerulean blue that I started with. Arteza, I generally go about one part paint to about four parts pouring medium because it's got nice high pigment. And you know, the more you play with your paint, the more you experiment with it, the more you get to know it. You know, each brand, each color is different. Um, you know, for the most part though, a certain brand and type, like this is Arteza's premium heavy body paint, generally about one to four. And when you're stirring your paint, you wanna, so I, I just added my Floetrol and pouring medium mix in here. A lot of it is, how's the color looking? Is it looking saturated? Um, is it looking, or is it starting to kind of dull down? So if it's looking a little dull, you're gonna wanna add a little bit more paint. Um, <clears throat> if it's still kind of thick and goopy, probably want some more, some more pouring medium in there. And, you know, it's kind of running off the stick. And this is still blue. I'm going for more of a turquoise. So these, are, this is just a little package of Arteza acrylic colors. And as we all know, blue and green make turquoise. So I'm gonna dip into some phalo green by Arteza, just a little squirt. And a little bit of pale green. Okay, starting to look more like a nice turquoise color. This is how I usually do things. And I line them up and I look at them together. Start to tell a story with your colors. Um, you know, I've got some gold here. This is some uh, burnt umber by Grumbacher. Cheap. Jerry's Art Artorama sells these for like three or four dollars a tube. And they're great paints. They have nice pigment, nice consistency. They mix really well. And this one, it's burnt umber, but I actually added a little bit of Liquitex Mars Black, or you can use really any black paint. Just because I didn't want it to be quite so brown, I wanted it to be a deeper color to add some contrast to the painting. So yeah, this is looking good. Um, this painting actually had some gray in it too. And gray, people never buy gray paint. <laughs> I scrape the paint off of the plastic when I pour and you'll end up with all sorts of shades of gray. There's kind of a purpley gray. Here's kind of a dark Payne's gray uh, type gray. Oh look, here's another jar of gray. <laughs> this is like, has a lot more red in it. It's kind of a, I used a lot of Bordeaux red in that painting, so there you go. Gray. Um, gray paint we have. <laughs> this is, and you know, these paints that come off the plastic end up with some satin enamel in them, some metallic flake from the metallic paints. It's all good. It's pretty. Um, Generally, you're gonna have to thin these down a little bit. This one's nice. It's nice and, I like my paints a little thinner. I like them to move, so. And if a paint is too thin, by the way, never be shy to add a little bit of student Elmer's glue. <laughs> um, the only time I ever use this is to thicken up a paint that's too watery. So, 
yeah, this is looking nice. We've got some nice burnt sienna. I'm building a nice turquoise paint. Gray, some nice gold. See how these colors are reading together? Really pretty. Um, we're gonna go back to this turquoise mixture that we're working on now. The, uh, the gold paint, this is Decorate Extreme Sheen. I usually use this, but the company's been out of it. 24K gold, beautiful cell producer. Uh, it takes about half paint to half pouring medium on these guys. So I'm liking it, um, what I'm gonna do, and I don't have a huge stock of these, so I use them sparingly and I covet them. Um, this is a Golden Fluid Turquoise, and Golden Fluid is a very special paint, you guys. This stuff is really expensive, um, and it's very, very fluid, but it's practically all pigment. So I'm just gonna squirt a little bit in there, a couple, you know, probably eight to 10 drops. And uh, <clears throat> if you're using just golden fluid, you can honestly mix it like one part paint to like eight parts pouring medium because it's so, so potent with pigment and color. And it's gonna be pretty watery because it's not a heavy body paint. So sometimes if I'm trying to get my golden fluid mixture thicker like the rest of my paints guess what we're going to use a little bit of glue um if you and that's if you're doing like a straight pour uh, and you want all your paints the same consistency so this is looking good i'm going to add a little bit more pouring medium because it's i can just tell that it can take it the pigments there it's not too thin yet I think it needs a little bit more green because it's just still feeling a little bit too blue. And some of this might be kind of boring, but I'm hoping you're getting some good information um, about different types of paints and how much pouring medium you're gonna need because uh, that's really what it's all about. And for this painting that I'm working on behind me, I've been experimenting with experimenting with house paint lately because it gives you less cells and I kind of wanted thicker lines with less cells. So I really like, does not have to be glidden. This is a satin base three untinted house paint. Um, so it is white, but it's not heavy with white pigment. And it's uh, what, I've, what I've done is mixed it in this big container here. Um, probably about house paint, Floetrol, then I added some white acrylic paint and water um, approximately, you know, to get a nice flowy run off the stick white. And some of the things I like about house paint, like I said, it doesn't, you don't get cells popping up all over the place. Um, I'm gonna take you over and show you a little bit about why. Okay. You see this effect here? Let me see if I can get the camera, sorry. Okay. You see what this is doing? That's that house paint, and it's um, untinted, so you're getting some transparency. And I honestly just, I really, I really like what it does. Kind of gives you more, um, like right here, you can really see it. It's just cool. Um, and, you know, there is Floetrol in there, so there's some cells happening here. Not a ton of cells. 
And our gold paint likes to sell. Metallics usually, you usually get cells with metallics. Like look at these kind of big, funky cells. So, that's what I'm digging about the house paint. Just a different look. Um, so, yeah, this is looking pretty good. Uh, what else can I tell you? You know, sometimes I'll work on these, like I said, for a while, and I'll come back and I'll look at it with a fresh eye, cover them back up. Um, if it starts to get chunky from the sides, like if some paint starts coming off, um, I'll just take a strainer like this and move it into a different cup or a different vessel um, to make sure that there's no chunks happening. But if you stir from the bottom and not scrape your sides, generally you can get away with doing this. That's looking pretty good. You know what I'm gonna do is add some water. Where's my water? Here it is. <laughs> And when I'm adding water to paint, I usually use this little pipette because it's kind of a delicate process. You don't want to add too much. So I'll do a pipette at a time. See how she's looking. And I just got this, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try a little bit of this iridescent medium because there's really no metallic in here. And I'm kind of curious what it's gonna do. I've seen people use it, but I've never used it. It's a little squirt. Let's see, let's look together, shall we? I don't know if you can see it or not. Added a little bit of iridescence. You know, they say if you don't like to mix paint, you probably shouldn't get into pouring paint. <laughs> I think it's fun. I love creating the palette and creating the colors and the textures that I want to use. Sometimes what I'll do too is if you're, uh, if you have paint in the bottom of a cup and you're squirting in your pouring medium, it's really interesting because you can sometimes kind of um, get an idea of what that paint's going to do with the with the flow trawl with your pouring medium. Like when I squirt gold pouring medium into this gold paint, I see the cells coming up and I kind of see what it's wanting to do. And um, you know, just really paying attention to your paint and watching it and loving it and working with it. Uh, is a really fun process, you guys. And I've always loved paint. I've, um, I was into watercolors a lot before I had kids. And uh, this is fun now. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's pretty rewarding to be able to pour paint onto a canvas and just see magic happen. All right, I'm going to let you go. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And yeah, have a beautiful day. Take great care. Thank you.